Hello, 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 and welcome to part 20 of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles playthrough. I, well, you know, if you were here last time, you, you know how utterly speechless I was. It's just, it's just, I, I have no theories in my mind. My mind is still as equally empty as it is, uh, fucking shallow. God. Uh, oop. The memoirs of the cloud of the crow. Memoirs. Yeah, this is different, right? I didn't accidentally get the last case? No, this is different. Okay. It was a ghastly tale of a winter's night. One of an invisible killer and a crime perpetrated on the pavement along Briar Road. As the victim lay at death's door, the mystery of just who had stabbed the young lady from behind had been resolved. But no sooner had my friend saved that Eastern Exchange student from his harrowing plight. Then in the dim, flickering shadows of gaslight, did a second bizarre crime rend the stillness of that very night. I dare say most can still recall the sensational headlines of the day. Haunted apartment of death. The condemned criminal's curse. The dread demon of coal gas. Yet, Though the great detective had at once discerned the truth upon his arrival at the scene, it only proved to be the overture that announced the rising of the curtain on a most tragic play. Oh, the Shakespearean guy's back! And we all scared back too! But, before we start anything, let me just say, I fucking knew it. That apartment was a carbon monoxide death trap. If if the real killer turns out to be carbon monoxide poisoning, don't say I didn't warn you, okay? <laughs> fucking... Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> anyway, go start real. So... My name is Ryosuke Naruhodo. I'm a fledgling lawyer, just starting out on my journey. Six months ago, I arrived as a visiting student of law, having made the long voyage across the sea from the Empire of Japan to here, London, England, and on the way, in quite extraordinary circumstances, I made the acquaintance of a world-famous detective. Currently, I reside in the attic of the detective's own lodgings, from where I run my legal consultancy of sorts. I've successfully defended a number of clients in Britain's highest court, the Old Bailey. But since a particularly grueling and unforgettable legal battle four months ago now, I haven't returned to the courtroom. In truth, I've lost my right to return. But that epic trial was just one small part of an epic tale, a tale which is now about to awaken from slumber. Thanks to a letter that arrived this morning from my homeland. Sato's letter. Rinosuke, are you okay? Hungry boy. Hungry little boy. Mmm, what a delicious smell wafting up the stairs. It must be nearly time for breakfast. Better go down to Mr. Holmes' suit and say good morning to the great detective and his flatmate. Wait, you're not gonna tell us what's in the letter? <laughs> Okay. Uh, 30th August. Oh, so like half a month since the previous case. And we don't have the letter either. God, she's still 16. Ha, huh, Rino, good. I was just about to call up to you. The bacon's ready. Good morning, Iris. It smells delicious as usual. Before we eat, though, I have some news. I have a surprise.
Not another word, Mr. Naruhoro. Oh, you got your machine back. Congratulations. This could just be an obtruse thing of a pre-breakfast stagnation repelling mental simulation, my dick fellow. Morning to you too, Mr. Holmes. Ah, yes. I see! Uh, okay. Uh, so that's it. Alright. The truth is as clear to me as day. My faculties of observation have revealed it again. What are you talking about? You, Mr. Naruhodo, you have this very morning met with a surprise. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. I, I, I was about to tell you. So close to our face. Yeah, I, I feel like Sherlock is one of those people who just doesn't understand the concept of personal space. Well, is that not the case? No, no, you're right. Um... Really, my dear fellow, it barely warrants explanation. Firstly, your hair is particularly unkempt, somewhat reminiscent of a bird's nest. Okay, look, buddy, you're right, okay? You're, you're, you're right. <laughs> you don't have to drag me about it. Secondly, oh, you're not finished yet. You have neglected to fasten the third button of your jacket. Clearly, when considering together, these two facts point at you having been flustered this morning. Can I talk now? But of course, but of course. Though I don't look for admiration, you understand? My hair always looks like this. It's uh, been this way since I first met you. Oh, it has? And the button was ripped off last night if you remember. By you. I only pulled your button off? <laughs> ah, yes. I recall the incident now. It was after supper, was it not? As the evening advanced, I picked up my violin and began to play the wailing notes of a haunting tune. But then, to my utter dismay, the third thing snapped! Why did it have to happen? Why? Little wonder then, that in my vexation, I grabbed the first button I saw and ripped it from its proper place. What the fuck is wrong with you? Sherlock. Buddy. Well, I'd like it back now, please. It's troubling me that I can't fasten my jacket. Bro, like, every single time, I'm like, oh, I'm too mean to Sherlock. He's so, he's actually quite nice. He's cute. He's good. He's a good friend. He's, he's a, he's a okay detective. He's, he's a good person. Every single time, I, I, I do the mental gymnastics to reach the, Sherlock is a good person, actually. Like, a finish line, this bitch just turns around and, and, does something like this that makes me just reconsider all of it. What the fuck, my dude? <laughs> and it's troubling me that you expect me to know where it is. Somewhere thereabouts on the floor, one presumes. You ripped off my jacket button and just threw it on the ground? Helpful. What about his at the present time, my dear fellow, is simply whether or not my deduction was an error. But early, Runa said when he came in, didn't he? I had a surprise this morning. <laughs> but of course you weren't listening, were you now? Ah, 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 ha! Well, that really is a surprise! God. Yes, this man is the pride of the British Empire. The famous consulting detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. There could be there can't be a single person in this world who doesn't know his name. Apart from maybe himself. Alrighty then, enough of this silly conversation. Come and eat this bacon before it gets cold. And I have a new herbal tea for you to try too. It's my latest special blend. 
Iris, I love you. You are truly the light in my life. And here we have is Irish Wilson, uh, Mr. Holmes's lodger and companion. Oh, she's a lodger. A truly exceptional young girl is the author of a highly successful serialization here in London. Yes, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, as published by In Rants magazine. So, Mr. Naruhoro, why don't you put us out of our misery? What surprised you this fine morning? Oh, well, I received a letter from Japan. Oh, from Susie, you mean? Was it really? <laughs> That's right. And she has some rather startling news, in fact. Ah, intriguing indeed. You must tell us about it over breakfast. Yes, I was going to, before you drove us on that fucking rendezvous. Oh, <laughs> yes, what fun! Um, oh, okay. Oh yeah, let's just talk about it now. Let's talk about Mr. Sato's letter. This is the letter that arrived from Japan this morning. By International Post. Oh, how lovely! I can see this beautiful writing! I wish I could read it! And how is your judicial assistant very, may I ask? She's very well, thank you. In fact, according to what she's written, uh, she actually appeared as a lawyer in the Japanese Supreme Court, and what a case! Uh, really? <gasps> Isn't she wonderful? She is. She is, Iris. A cut above your good self, my dear fellow. I also won a case in the Japanese Supreme Court, I'll have you know. I, I won cases- <laughs> Oh my god, same brain. I won cases too, you know? Apparently, Mr. Natsume appeared as, uh, in the trial as a witness. Natsu... Natsu... Mm, no, I don't recall that name. Of, of course you do! We helped the man! Twice! You know, in those two cases that took place on Briar Road six months ago? Ah, the moustached, twitchy man in the somewhat... With the, with the somewhat feline eyes and the moustache. He didn't have two moustaches, Hurley. <laughs> yes, who could forget those two cases? They made very deep impression on me. They made a very deep impression on you, but you still could not remember the name of the guy. Although I must confess, the details are a little hazy now. A very deep impression they made on you, clearly. Well, let's get to the news. So, what was this startling news penned by Mr. Sato? Do you remember the case of the haunted lodgings, Mr. Holmes? <laughs> of yes! It's very interesting, you know? I don't feel entirely uncertain that a case of that nature did not, not, occur. What? He's totally forgotten then. Oh. Especially back from your trip. Welcome back for your trip. I hope you had a great time. Uh, in time for case two. <laughs> this this second secret case that happened behind our backs that I was. God, I can't like. Usually I hate things like this when they're like, oh yeah, um that thing it happened, but you didn't see it because. Uh, fuck you, I guess. Like usually I hate that, but like I don't know. This time I'm like legitimately intrigued. Like on like on like what was so horrible that that they didn't tell us the audience playing as real scare. <sighs> I guess we'll find out. But yeah, I hope your trip was good. Anyway, in her letter, Mrs. Sato asked that we read over her case notes again and investigate further. Though it took place half a year ago. For what purpose? Because something that Mrs. Natsume said to her, uh, apparently. He suggested that the real reason why she was called back to Japan so suddenly might have been something to do with that case of the haunted lodgings. Oh? On Mr. Natsume's return to Japan, Mr. Sato's father questioned him about the case, she says. And something Mr. Natsume said appeared to trouble Professor Mikotoba 
prompting him to send that telegram. Oh, that case! Yes! It was... very strange, wasn't it? Yeah... And I had compiled the whole story into a nice neat manuscript, ready for publication too! But then Hurley, he was all funny about it, remember? It was very mean. Eh? The story must not be published, you said. Very mysteriously as well. Really? I said that? Are you sure? <sighs> Do you perhaps know something about it as well, Mr. Holmes? About why Mr. Sato was suddenly told four months ago that she had to return to Japan. Mrs. Otto's repatriation. It's been four months now since we waved Susie off at that Dover. It was such a shock, wasn't it? The way she just suddenly announced that she had to go back to Japan. Indeed it was. Due to a telegram she had received from her homeland, I believe. That's right. Telling her to return urgently. Yes, because her father had passed away. Close? Not, not quite? No, 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 no. It, it just said he was suffering from a high fever, the cause of which was unknown. He's not dead. But uh, according to this letter, that news about her father's fever was just a ruse. A ruse? So, Susie's daddy lied to her so that she'd make the voyage back home? Why would he do that? I have to admit, I have absolutely no idea. But, but she believes it's almost certainly related to the case of the haunted lodgings. The carbon monoxide death trap. Summoning her back to Japan so suddenly like that. I wonder what Mr. Sato's father is hiding. Hmm, Harley, do you know what this is about? Did you get dressed when I wasn't looking? the fuck? How do you do that so quickly? Huh? Hmm? Ah, well, who can say? What? But, but you, you said... Please, I have engagements, my dear fellow. My calendar is surprisingly full today. And a stringent analysis of the matter will be excessive, I feel, even if I work quite at leisure. So, Man the fort in my absence, won't you, Iris? <laughs> I will, Harley. Don't worry. See you later! He scuttled off rather quickly there. Bitch. Oh, just spins and does a magical girl transformation. <laughs> I think he might. Like... You, you, uh, you know those uh, magician acts where they like uh they, they throw confetti and then and then they change like clothes. I feel like that's what Harlock does. <laughs> he just he just diverts your attention somehow and then he's just wearing different clothes. What the fuck, my dude? I think perhaps Professor Mikotoba isn't the only person hiding something here. So san was involved in two cases, but only one of them was forbidden by from being published. By, of all people, Mr. Holmes. So, uh, I guess that's like two cases that he didn't want published. The Soseki one and the Hounds of Baskerville? Aha! I found them at last! Iris, uh, are they... The notes about the case? <laughs> that's right! Sissy and I compiled them together! Aww. Once again, the, the girls do the heavy lifting. <laughs> The case of the haunted lodgings. You want to read them, Bruno? Boy, do I! Absolutely. Thank you, Iris. I have no idea what secrets could still be hiding in the shadows of this case. But perhaps if I read over the notes again, something may come to light. That's the spirit? Spirit? Get it? Cause hauntings? <laughs> uh, what did the guys even do in this household? Uh, Ryonosuke probably cleans the toilet. Sure, 
Sherlock can sometimes play music? I don't know, it's- the list is very short. <laughs> Steal your buttons, yeah. <laughs> Nothing particularly helpful. And so... Iris and I decide to read over the case notes again, together. Everything from what happened, to our investigation, and that fierce battle in court that followed. Oh wait, is this how we entered the flashback case? Reliving every detail. I just need to find a clue. And I have all the time in the world. Aw. It's... It's nice that, like, for once, uh, the main character's, like, relaxed about it. Because, of course, I'm no longer... Oof! I had half a second of happiness that was immediately snatched away. What? I'm no longer allowed to practice law in the courts of Great Britain? You- were you debarred? What the f- What? Huh? What happened in- What? Wait, this- Huh? What? <laughs> Great game over, let's go home. This case, though, because this this case happened b b before, before the, before the, bef be before the egg the egg Egbert case, right? It, what happened since then? Wait, did Susato leave and then immediately your life just fell apart? Is that what happened? Susato goes and and just immediately you, you can't file paperwork correctly, so you are like fucking held in contempt of the court and like immediately thrown out or like, debarred or something. Is that what happened? Ryosuke! What the fuck? Oh my god. Okay. Sure, I guess. This might as well happen. That was like such a slap to the face. Like a whiplash. I was actually so happy for like one time. I was like, oh, it's so nice that, you know, he's not panicked about a case. Immediately the game is like, oh, you're feeling good about Ryosuke, huh? <laughs> fuck you. Okay. God. It was six months ago. A mysterious incident that unfolded in the wintry streets of London. A young woman was found lying on the snowing pavement of Briar Road with a knife in her back. Fortunately, her life was spared, but she was unconscious for several days following the incident. No moment of calm for me. No. <laughs> This game just loves to, like, fucking take me for a ride. It's a roller coaster of emotions. <sighs> the fog was thick, and nobody saw her attacker, but... By a cruel twist of fate, a visiting Japanese student was walking behind her at the time, and was duly arrested. That man was Sosaki-san, the man who effected his arrest uh, and the man who effected his arrest was Mr. Holmes. Believing in our compatriot's innocence, Sasato-san and I decided to represent Soseki-san in court. And after a grueling trial of many twists and turns, we finally managed to prove his innocence. Joyful, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! Was the man's reaction after the trial. But his jubilant jubilation was short-lived. We received a telegram from Mr. Holmes the following morning. The following morning, not even 24 hours. The victim of Briar Road stabbing has regained consciousness. Oh, it is. Hurry to Bart's at once. So Susato-san and I summoned a handsome, handsome, and headed immediately to the hospital. Oh, there's just straight up a mouse here. Hey, buddy. Hey, sweetheart. Mwah. What a beautiful little mousey. Okay. Uh. 
This is this is back in the twenty first of February. Uh oh, early in the morning, five thirty AM. There you are, at last. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. I think not. Oh You're late! What on earth took you so long? Your telegram only arrived at five o'clock, Mr. Holmes, and it's a twenty minute ride to the hospital. That, that's right, it, it's half past five now. I, I think we made very good time. The time is utterly irrelevant. In fact, I have been waiting for what felt like an eternity. Are you a child? <laughs> In point of fact, I myself was awoken at four this morning by a telegram boy. And feeling it was somewhat unjust that I alone had been roused at such an hour, I sent one to you. Okay. Well, thanks for that! Anyway, you're here now. So, the victim is over there. She only just regained consciousness. Uh, Olive! Olive Green? I think you should introduce yourselves, and I shall observe from here. So, that's the lady who was found on the snow-covered pavement with a knife in her back. Her name is... Ah, yes, here we are, Miss Green. Alright, let's... Go. Oh, we can't converse? Okay. Hey, Lassie. 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 Eee! A mouse, Mr. Naruhoro! An enormous mouse! Hmm. Vermin in a hospital? That doesn't seem the best. No, it's clearly a fancy mouse. Because of the, the coat. It looks like a very healthy specimen, isn't it? I it's very plump. I I'm not sure that's down to the excellence of this uh, facility, if that's what you were thinking. Um, no, this is clearly a pet mouse. It's cute little baby. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, Miss Green, for the wait. Uh, um, good morning. Oh, you're an artist. How are you feeling? Uh, hello. I'm Ryosuke Naruhoro, from, from the Empire of Japan. Oh no! Was, was it your knife that- Are you the man who- Oh no 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 no, I'm just a lawyer. And I'm Sasato Mikotoba. Pleased to meet you. Oh no, was it- Your knife then? Are you the one? Oh no 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 no, I assure you, I'm Mr. Naruhoro's judicial assistant. We heard that you'd regain consciousness and wanted to come in to give you our best wishes. Best... wishes... for me? Oh, uh, thank you. I'm Olive. Olive Green. I'm an artist. Just released Wagga High as hospital, free meal. <gasps> no, the mousey! <laughs> but Wagga High does deserve a treat. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I'm actually kind of sad how they didn't allow like any pets on the ship. Cause like, you know, like ships back in the day, to keep verb in check, they would just keep cats, right? Like ship cats were super common. I think I think Wakahai deserves a treat. We will give him a treat when we get back. But this mousy is a good mousy, right? At least I'm hoping. <laughs> the the alternative is the hospital just literally has just rats and mice running along. Well, no, that's not right, is it? I I mean, it's, I'm trying to be an artist. Girl, you and me both. Well, what I really mean is, I desperately want to be an artist. Girl, you and me both. But the truth is, I don't have any talent. I know I don't. <laughs> Girl, you and me both. <laughs> it's no wonder I was stabbed in the back. Okay, that's unrelatable. I don't think that's related, actually. Gosh, this young woman seems to bend over backwards to put herself down. Seeing as we're here, we should ask her about what happened, from her perspective, I suppose. Alright, uh, what do you remember of the incident? To be suddenly struck in the back by a blade as you were walking along the pavement? What a terrible experience you had, Miss Green. 
so cold that day and the fog was so thick. I couldn't see a thing. That was four days ago now, I think. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's right. I'm afraid you've been comatose all that time. But the case has been solved, hasn't it? Oh, while well, I was here at hospital, I mean. Yeah, lucky for us, yeah. When did you become... <laughs> when did this game become a self insert? <laughs> right? <laughs> Too relatable. Indeed it has, my dear madame. Spectacularly. By none other than... By none other than I, Harlock Sholmes. Mr. Holmes, as you well know, it was Mr. Nadahoro's hard work in the court that solved the case. Thank you, Susato. Are you yet to hear what happened, Miss Green? Yes, I'm afraid so. A gentleman from the police force is supposed to be coming in to fill me in shortly. The bias? Makes it? Oh, I see. Me coming round seems to have made everyone frantically busy. I'm so sorry. I should never have regained consciousness. It was selfish of me. Okay. Uh, you know what? Do they have therapy yet? I think we can work on your self-image. Oh, no, we're also relieved that you're on the mend, Miss Green. We really are. Remember, you are not a burden, okay? You're, you're not a burden. So please feel better and heal from that stab wound in the back. Uh, but with that kind of attitude, maybe her surname should be Blue, not Green. We're all scared. Don't be mean to this lady. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, tell me a bit about yourself, sweetheart. So, you're an artist, are you, Miss Green? Oh, no, no I, I couldn't possibly claim that. I'm a fledgling artist at best. I mean, I'm a student of art, really. Uh, Thorndike Academy of Fine Arts. Oh, my, an Academy of Fine Arts? Great Britain is such a wonderful country. Tell me, Miss Green, do you live hereabouts? Oh, no, actually. I don't, don't deserve it, but I have a little flat on Brixton Road. I see. How very interesting. Oh, no, is, is it? Brixton is some ten steps away on the underground from here. And Thorndike Academy is a mere three-minute walk from Brixton's town centre. Does that matter, Mr. Holmes? Perhaps not, but Briar Road is far less celebrous part of town by comparison, dwelt in by those inferior of those of inferior means. Including the maleficent Mr. Mustache. Inferior means? I suppose Sosaki san does fit the bill. It struck me as somewhat out of the ordinary from a young fine art student to be walking in such a district. I mean, maybe she was getting books, wasn't she? That's all. What's this? She suddenly clammed up? Mr. Holmes, you should be ashamed of yourself, prying into a young maiden's private affairs. Ha ha ha! Oh dear me! Do forgive me! You don't sound very sorry at all. Um, if you don't mind. I'm being discharged shortly, so I need to pack up my things. Wait, didn't you just wake up? How did you even have time to unpack your things if you were unconscious the entire time? They didn't even know who you were. So how did your things get here? Huh? Oh, yes, of course. We, we won't keep you. Thank you so much, Miss Green. Okay. Bit weird, but okay. No, for real. How did, how did this stuff even get here? Uh, oh. What's this? Look, there's a photograph of this frame here. Ah. Oh, yes, it's a picture of a young gentleman. A relation, perhaps? Looks to be about the same age as Miss Green, I would say. 
Perhaps the young woman's special someone, do you think? <laughs> my mind, Miss Nodohoro. I didn't know you had a sense for matters of the heart. N not in the least. I sincerely said the first thing I thought of. Huh? Is there a Mr. Nar Narrowfodder here? Mr. Narrowfodder? Narrowfodder? Narrowfodder now? Um, if you're looking for Narrowfodder, the lawyer, that's me, but... Ah! Mr. Narrowfodder! Good. This is for you. A message from... Pardon? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> it's a message from a saucy... <laughs> From a saucy nut. <laughs> a saucy nut. What the fuck? <clears throat> it's a message from a Mr. Saucy Nuts Meg. Innocent. S saucy nuts, Meg. Uh, a plus romanization. Naruhoro shouldn't be uh, forwarding his dirty letters to work. <laughs> right? And the, yeah, these transliterations are actually amazing. Oh my god. This is so unfortunate. God, I'm dying. Saucy nuts, Meg. Is it not to me? Uh, sent a message to me? But why would a policeman be delivering a message for Mr. Natsume? <laughs> Nutsmeg. Uh, exactly. Uh, what's what's going on? What's a Scotland Yard constable doing playing delivery boy at this time in the morning? <sighs> what are you waiting for? Let me see that. Oh. Well. This is most unexpected. Did someone else die? Is something uh, something wrong, Mr. Holmes? Is something wrong, Mr. Holmes? He says. Have you not seen this note? No, because you snatched it from my hands before I could read it. No, how could I have? It would seem that London's criminals have no intention of letting the great detective rest. A new case calls. A case of murder, no less. We must depart at once. Murder? Call a cab? Time is of the essence. But the trouble is, we've yet to read Mr. Natsume's note. I think we will ought to pay him a visit in his lodgings once we did. And that will be entirely convenient. Huh? Convenient? What do you mean? Oh, the murder took place in his... It's all here in the note, my dear fellows. The murder we must investigate took place at Mr. Massage's lodgings. <sighs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'll hail for... Fia... Fia... A what? Fiarker? Fiar? Fia... Fia... All these... All these words for uh, transportation that I don't know. Fiark. A fiat. It was only yesterday that Sosaki-san was in court and we were dispelling doubt about his innocence. A and now, the very next day, there's a murder in the man's own address? He very well being the unluckiest man alive. Or so it seemed to us at the time, but we were soon to discover that it was worse than we thought. 
Oh god, how can it get worse? Oh, bye, Miss Green. Say hi to your pet mouse for me. Uh... Alright, Miss Natsume. No! Shakespeare guy! No! Oh, I'm so sad. Ah. Well, on one hand, I we we get we got to saw him again. We we got to see him again. But but uh, um, on the other on the other hand, um, I, I guess we won't ever be hearing him fucking wax poetic, which is a shame, really. Ah. I don't know. Maybe he's just taking a nap. Yeah, you know, sometimes people take naps at crime scenes. Maybe he's just taking a nap. I sure hope so. Hope he gets better. What on earth? Oh my! The gentleman is deceased without question! He's dead! Oh, well, there goes that theory. <laughs> Broke up student, Mr. Naruhoro Esquire! Mr. Natsume! Oh, why? Why is this happening? Why to me? I've only just got out of court yesterday! I was finally home after two days of misery! And then I woke up the next day to this! No early bird should catch a worm like this! Wonderful worm without wiggle! I see you're in high spirits again this morning, Mr. Massage. Yeah. Oh, not the horrible Arlock Shooms! Shoo! Shove off! Show yourself the door! I never invited you! Mr. Holmes came here with us. I'm quite sure he'll be able to help you, Mr. Natsume. I'm entirely at your disposal, Mr. Mustache. What can I do for you? Leave. <gasps> hey, Gregson! Here they are. Already. The busybodies. Ah, Inspector Gregson. What a pleasant surprise! Pleasant, is it? It's me heartburn every time I see your face at a crime scene, Holmes. Ha! I deduce, Inspector, that your heartburn is a result of your excessive consumption of fried food. Um, good morning, Inspector. It's a crime scene! Don't you go touching anything? Or good morning to you too, sunshine. Oh. I love how he's just standing there dejectedly, like, looking at the body. Like, where did he go wrong? <laughs> oh, no. I like the set, though. It's it's very Shrek 2. If you know what I mean. It's nice. Oi! Sit hands off! Gonna mess up my crying scene! Oh, uh... Nope, I just wanted to look, that's all. No chance! I know you're kind. My kind, huh? You'll mess it up just by looking at it. Uh, someone's in a bad mood. And there's certainly some bad air in here, isn't there? <laughs> Alright, it sounds like I better talk to the inspector first and try to curry some flavor. Alright, um, hey there, buddy. So, inspector, what was the victim's name? Who was he? Sham spear. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, William Sham spear, huh? <laughs> it was a lodger here. <laughs> as you can probably tell, it was an actor. A bit of a dead loss as it happens. Or just dead. Mr. Sham spear. Sham spear. It was the landlord, old Mr. Garadab, and the other lodger, Mr. Nutsume, who found him. Fell in ri rise at his usual hour, so Garadab got worried and kicked the door down. But doesn't Mr. Garadab have a bad leg? Ah, yeah, you're right there. Is that Jerry Japanese hunchback over there who actually did the kicking? Ah, really? So sick is on? The victim was pretty hard up, it seems. He even done some time inside for petty crimes. Oh, so hard up like uh criminal case, and not hard up like Rigor Mortis. <laughs> uh, 
Sham is such a great name. Yeah, right? I'm tickled pink. Like, I, I usually love all, like, Ace Attorney, like, names. Because they tend to be, like, just amazing puns. But Shamspear, William Shamspear, a notch above. You had no money. Place to go. Friends. His only acquaintances were the people in this house. Well, at least they cared enough about him to go looking for him when he didn't rise at his usual hour. So, you know, he was loved. Miserable life. Miserable end to it. So, what exactly is Mr. Nutsamed still doing here? He's not involved in the investigation, so shouldn't you have sent him away from the crime scene? Well, I'm not saying it because the fellow looks odd or anything, or that he acts suspicious. Okay. But, it would be prudent to take a statement from the cop. I mean, cohabitor. Gregson, you son of a bitch. You nearly said culprit there, buddy, didn't ya? Oh dear, Mr. Natsume appears to be under suspicion again. Something seems that way. He does just come across as such an odd fellow, doesn't he? <laughs> Poor man, how unfortunate. Some people have resting bitch face, Mr. Natsume has resting murderer face. Anyway, I'll say much until the coroner gets here. But I don't think the fellow's been gone all that long. The body's still warm? Even though the inspector would allow it, I don't think I could bring myself to touch a dead body. The body's still warm? In the middle of winter? Holy shit. You must be fresh as fuck, boy. What a terrible thing to have happened. It's only been three days since I was arrested for the incident on the pavement outside! And then, I finally regain my freedom, it starts happening all over again! Endless existence of excruciating experiences! So, the victim lived here on the ground floor, and your room is just one story up, is it? Yes, that's right. In a way, we were neighbors, I suppose. So, you know the victim? Or are you friends? Is that a no? Oh. Are you okay, sir? What, what's the matter with Sosuke san now? It was an innocent enough question, wasn't it? Why does he seem so shaken by it? Well, I suppose he, he was a c complete str stranger. But did he ever invite me to his room? Never! In my honor, I swear it! What an extreme reaction. You're probably wishing you'd never asked now, aren't you, Mr. Nadahoro? Does he have, like, trauma from being questioned? Oh, poor guy. When we found him here, I was wretched. Oh, what the fuck? Can I help you? Sorry, I just got a spam call. I don't know about you guys, but I've been getting so many spam calls recently, it's not even funny. Like fucking, hi, your Amazon order, shut up. Uh, your visa is about to exc I don't have a visa! Get off my dick! Oh, God. Uh, what was I doing? I was reading. When we found him here, I felt wretched. Which is why I sent word asking you to come. <laughs> Through the inspector over there! Samson flags my spam calls now so I don't have to pick up. Yeah, my phone recently has a thing where it like it tells you whether or not it suspects it's a spam call. Which is, which is nice. Uh, but still, like, how dare you? <laughs> this is like dinner time. Don't don't call me. What the fuck? Did you just appear? <laughs> Why are you posing? He does give me Prince Charming vibes. Um, Mr. Holmes, what are you doing? You need only observe to know it, my dear fellow. 
Investigating, naturally. There's nothing natural about that pose. Mr. Holmes, have you made some miraculous discovery? Patience, my dear madame, patience. We have not been in this room five minutes. So far, all I've managed to deduce is what actually happened. Okay, so what actually happened then, buddy? Oh my goodness! But isn't that everything you, we need to know, Miss Holmes? Hmm. Now that you propose the idea, I believe one could, indeed, see it that way. At the present time, I have managed to draw two incontrovertible conclusions. The first is that there was a physical struggle here last night in which the victim fought for his life. <laughs> uh, Miss Natsume, what's wrong? Is something that Mr. Shum said significant somehow? N no, don't mind me! <laughs> Forget I was here. Okay. I hate to say it, but that's highly suspicious. <laughs> Shum's deduction will be correct this time. Really? Hmm, uh, doubt. <laughs> and my second conclusion? Is that there was a poison lingering in the air here last night that passed the lip victim's lips? The nonsense! Huh? Alright, Mr. Natsume, why are you reacting so extremely to Mr. Holmes' deductions? Please, pretend I'm not here! Rather difficult when you keep interjecting like that. I. Are you sure you're all right? Invisible, ineffable, inscrutable, insignificant. Impossible to ignore. You must tell us everything, Mr. Holmes. Spare no detail. But of course. Let the theatrical tragedy before us be unraveled by my great deductions presented for your pleasure in two acts. We've had some truly astonishing great deductions from Mr. Holmes in the past. No doubt that this will be no exception. What miracles will unfold before our eyes this time? To be fair, Holmes gets, kind of gets it every time and then just pulls the weirdest look. Yeah, right? Like he, like he, he follows a line of reasoning that makes perfect sense. But then instead of like following the line of, line of reasoning like naturally, he he grabs the most like eye catching like out there like thing and just chases that instead. Like it's like what the fuck, my dude? You're so close yet so far. See, this is feeding into my theory that he's actually super smart, just like shenanigans. Oh, so you think he does it on purpose? No. <laughs> no. 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 I. No. <laughs> I, I, I can't say that with any confidence. He is... He's clever. That's all I'll... He's clever. But, you know. So I'm just such a wild deduction next case, it's kind of funny. I feel like every case, like every deduction of his is just wild. But yeah, let's, let's see what he pulls this time. Let's see what kind of bullshit he pulls this time. If he says some shit about dragon, I'm gonna fucking personally strangle him. But of course there was a dragon! <laughs> Is this not a castle? <laughs> so, my dear fellows, for your delight and wonder, let the curtain rise. For Herlock Sherms, logic and reasoning spectacular. Act 1. The Great Deduction. The game is afoot. I'm so sad the guy is dead though. Alas, poor William. Careful observation of the victim reveals to us the events that transpired in this disconsolate room last night. Foam at the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of... Answer me, why are you... Foam at the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of poison. Next to the victim is a bar of soap. Nope. <laughs> There's a large dining plate, which contains, you will observe... Oh, it is soap! <laughs> oh my god! What?! I was joking! <laughs> okay! 
one half of a sizable bar of soap. Meaningful? Indubitably. What the fuck? Oh, uh, you, you think it's also quite valid that he has a troll personality and his reputation got to come from somewhere? Because <laughs> he is really super eccentric, right? God. I don't know. As in my mind, he's still like a, like a, just a super, super intelligent and gifted four-year-old. Right? It's not cheese! Apparently it is soap! Like, I was joking, but apparently it's soap. Either that or, like, uh, Sherlock just thinks it's soap. I don't know. We'll find out. Why is the soap set up so purposefully upon the dish? Like the victim's last supper, in fact. <laughs> yes. Could it have been the man was about to eat it? Of course! The fork reveals the answer. It appears that the young man's appetite was his undoing. Taking up arms in the form of his cutlery, the victim engaged in a deadly battle for his life. Yet the struggle against his hunger was in vain, for in the end, he couldn't resist devouring the slippery beast. <laughs> but London's foul soap is besmirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plate. And not the very obviously tipped cup that has liquid in it. Okay? The soap and the lather about the young man's mouth are too perfectly matched to ignore. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to excessive ingestion of foul soap. Though, personally, I have a greater interest in the taste of foul candle wax, of course. Ooh, candle wax really truly is. Like, like melted candle wax is like truly the forbidden taffy. I, for like every single time I have a candle going, I really want to bite into it. <laughs> So like, I, I understand what Sherlock means. <laughs> Poisoning from soap ingestion. Okay. Suicide or murder? The cause of death identified. We proceed to act two. And we ponder the next question. Was this suicide? Or murder? The audience will recall that death occurred during the victim's last supper. Did the man die and, and die alone? This single teacup suggests the answer. To draw a conclusion on such meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. The careful criminal could have absconded with his own cup to cover his tracks. Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. Suzuki san. Sekisan, why are you so scared? Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock! Uh, okay. Though forced open now, at the time of the incident, this door was locked. And the sole key was in the victim's pocket. In other words, when the victim consumed the poison, he must have been alone. Loan with his inferior soap for a once wafted an inferior scent. And with that acrid aroma lingering in the air, the victim met his end in tragic solitude. We can take some comfort only in the fact that his soul was well cleansed on his way to the hereafter. No possible perpetrator present. Alright. Thus concludes the final act of Hellshirm's Great Deduction. Oh man, I don't like this. So I was like, what the fuck did you do? Crunchy. A step away, good luck unraveling this yarn. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for coming in. I'll see you later. And yes, I think I will need that good luck. <laughs> God, so sucky son. There's just one thing, Mr. Holmes. 
You are disposed to identifying just one thing, aren't you, Miss Narohoro? Pray, what concerns you? Well, no matter how hungry he was, do you really think a man would have eaten soap? It's quite apparent that this young man had barely a penny to his name. There's a curious thing, but to one so destitute, soap can suddenly appear quite irresistibly appetizing. I mean, a bar of soap does look quite nice. I have... Actually, no, I, should, I don't think I should admit this. <laughs> I uh, actually, you know what? Fuck it. I'll admit it. I, I have bitten into a bar of soap before. <laughs> just just to see the texture. <laughs> I didn't eat it. I didn't eat it. I just I just bit into it just to test it. Um, So, yeah, the bars of soap do have an allure about them. <laughs> But, you know, they, they taste bitter, and so it doesn't taste good. So I don't, I don't imagine that he would actually eat it. How extraordinary! In truth, I... Oh my god. <laughs> you and me both, Holmes. <laughs> in truth, I have tried a bit of soap myself in the past. You've eaten it, you mean? My dear fellow, it was some time ago now. Our postulation was that it would cleanse my gut. Uh... Soaps and candles, interesting taste I got there. No, I haven't eaten a candle before. I just said that they look like they'll be nice to bite into. <laughs> don't, 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 don't you guys ever get like a, like a, like a, like a urge to like, uh, like try something? <laughs> like for the texture? <laughs> like, like both soap and candles have like a, like a good texture about them, right? <laughs> they taste bad. Not that I've tasted candles, but like, I, I assume they taste bad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I like caramels. They have a good texture too. And did it? As I writhed in agony on the floor and spilt the contents of my stomach, <laughs> yes, I believe it did. Okay. The experience taught me a valuable lesson. Soap is quite poisonous. And it has an unpleasant taste and leads to great discomfort. In summary, I cannot recommend it. But believe me, I wasn't... I wouldn't eat it even if you did. There's something that troubles me as well, actually. Oh? What's that? It's Mr. Natsume. Huh? I couldn't help noticing him shudder and quivering out of the corner of my eye. Are you the type of person who ate Play-Doh as a kid? Oh, surprisingly, no! <laughs> Like, you would think I would, right? Uh, being, like, the p type of person I am. <laughs> but no, I... I did, no, the, the, the texture of Play-Doh is different. It doesn't look like it'll taste good. I I never ate Play-Doh. And I didn't understand people who would, like... Uh, like, try to eat it and stuff. Uh... Like, that... That texture feels, like, completely separate to me. I don't know, it's, like, too soft? I don't... Too soft, maybe? I'm not quite sure what it is exactly. But no, I, I don't like Play-Doh. <laughs> I never bit into Play-Doh as a kid. And, uh... Uh, like, during, like, dentist appointments? I don't know if you guys ever had to do, like, a mouth mold or stuff like that? Yeah, like, that texture, I feel like, is the same as Play-Doh. It's also equally bad. <laughs> it needs to be slightly more solid, I think. Like... Stretchy. Not, not stretchy. Mm. Chewy? Not too soft. Play-Doh just reminds me of raw dough, which doesn't look like it's edible at all. Actually, hmm. Cookie dough is nice. But that's because it's like, it's harder. Not, not harder. More solid? I don't know. It has to have a certain... It has to be past a certain viscosity for me to find it appealing. <laughs> Almost like this Mr. Holmes' deductions touch a nerve somehow. <laughs> no! <laughs> Nonsense! Well, that clenched teeth episode didn't last. I think, judging by Miss Natsume's reaction, the Great Deduction may need some gentle corrections in order to reach the actual truth. Yes, Mr. Holmes' observations and deductions are sometimes a little too sharp. His tendency to hit the nail on the side of the head and drive it in at an obtuse angle. <laughs> Does that? 
it fails to uh, it falls to us to straighten things out. All right then. Oh, wrong one. All right then. Let's see what we can do. Yes, we must pick the key words in Mr. Holmes' quite brilliant deductions, and discreetly exchange them for something that makes a little more sense. If we can do that. And show me will arrive at what Mr. Holmes meant to say in the first place. In that case, are you ready for the second performance of the day? Holmes, 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 how did you survive without us? Once again, my dear fellows, for your continued delight and wonder, let the curtain rise. For Herlock Holmes, logic and reasoning so spectacular. Act 1, take 2. What is the sub injection? Careful observation of this victim reveals to us the event that transpired in this disconsolate room last night. I actually wonder if eating too much soap can kill you. Because, like, soap is made from, like, lye and oils, right? The oils are fine. The lye is alkaline, which would not be good for you. I, like, I know straight lye can kill you, but soap? Because the saponification, like, process, like, it changes a little bit. Uh, I don't... Like... Do you have to eat a lot of it to kill you? I can't imagine that a small bit will kill you. And the guy still has a whole bar left. <laughs> okay, so poison is correct. But... The soap is not? Last supper? Yes. Could it be the mouse about to eat it? Of course! The fork! Not the fork. Well, you can't deny the fork implies a man was eating something. Or about to eat something. Yes, that's true. If I were to decide to eat some soap, I should prefer to use a fork rather than tempt it with chopsticks. And of course, only half- Oh, what is only half? Okay. Only half the bar of soap is left on the plate. But might there be some other explanation? Something material, some interesting material that proves whether or not the man really ate some soap. Is there something on the fork? Oh, yeah. Oh wait. You can see the other half of the bar on the ground here. Look, there's more soup on the floor here! Mr. Shamspear must have really loved this stuff! Well, let's not jump to conclusions, Mr. Narohoro. Yeah, you're, 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 oh, you're taking a page out of Sherlock's book, huh? Look closely at this soap. Do you see that it would fit together perfectly? With the half the bar on the table? What the? How can that be? I think... That they are two halves of the same bar that broke apart. We didn't eat any soap. Uh... Can we check out this fork? Is there anything on it? I suppose you eat soap with a fork, would you? I don't think it's a question of which implement you'd use. You shouldn't eat soap, full stop! But then why does a man have a fork in his hand? Oh dear. I understand your frustration, Mr. Narohoro. Please don't take it out on me. The point is... If we decide... The, the man used this fork to eat the soap, we wouldn't be changing Mr. Holmes' deduction. So we really ought to consider some other clues. Okay. Go. Do you think it was drinking tea with the soap? It comes empty, so there's no way of knowing. I'm just gonna casually accept that soap is an appropriate thing to snack on. <laughs> yeah. I love how it's like, oh yeah, well, Sh Sherlock said it, my buddy said it, so clearly, <laughs> it has to be it, right? Ah, how's this for an idea? Perhaps the cup was full of water, and he was dissolving the soap in it so he could gulp down as much as possible? Wow, Brunoski, you really, you really grabbed and ran with that soap eating idea, didn't you? <laughs> Please remember that he may not actually have been a soap lover that he's made out to be. I can't believe for once, Sasato is the, um, the voice of reason. Is that all there is? I can't go any further? Huh? That's strange. Um... Okay. 
okay. So I guess I present the... I just present this bar. Because he didn't- Take that! He didn't eat the soap. <laughs> Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course! The other piece of soap reveals the answer. That being the other half of soap on the table. In short, the victim was not eating soap at all. But it's obvious, really. For no death of hunger could drive a man to attempt to eat soap. <laughs> wow. It's backtracking so easily. Even I, with my unquenchable thirst for practical knowledge, took only a single bite! But that begs the question of how the man was poisoned, because there's no other sign of food on the table. An excellent observation, Mr. Narohoro, and one that furnishes us with the answer we seek. London's found soap, besmirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by the poisonous soap. Not soap. Teacup. Mr. Holmes is still pushing the soap argument then, even after admitting that's not a good not a good snack. <laughs> Perhaps he suggested the man lick the soap rather than ate it. If soap in London is that poisonous, I don't think I want to be washing my hands with it. But there's no signs of any food in this room at all. Of course food isn't the only thing that passes people's lips, is it? Food and drink. Uh uh buh, buh, buh. You can't take that! Yes! The victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the teacup. Indeed! Cuffs have been the vessel of choice for practicing poisoners over the centuries. She's <laughs> nice for taking, testing how many licks it takes to get to the center of the soap bar. Oh my gosh, have you guys seen those uh, soap bars that are like clear glycerin soap, but they have like a little charm in the inside? <laughs> oh, I ran, I really like this. It's like, uh, as you as you wash your hands, you, you have like a prize at the very end, you know? <laughs> Sorry, that's what, that's what it reminded me of. How many licks to the center of the soap bar? <laughs> and it would appear that the victim drank every last drop. Sosaki-san, there's no sort of food anywhere in this room. Which leads us to the immutable conclusion. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to the ingestional poison contained in this teacup. Why wash hands when you can just lick your waist to the prize? <laughs> Free snack, you know? Snack and prize. Like a kinder surprise. Oh man, I miss kind of surprises. I haven't seen one in years though. I wonder if they still sell them. The cause of death. The cause of death. The cause of death identified. We proceed to Act Two. We ponder the next question. What was it? Suicide or murder? The audience will recall that the death occurred during the victim's last supper. Did the man die and die alone? A single teacup suggests an answer. Ah! The Western vessel for infused hot drinks again. It's already featured heavily in our deductions so far. Yes, we can imagine that shortly before his death, Mr. Shamspear was having a drink of tea. There would be nothing remarkable about that. Uh, but what troubles me is Mr. Natsume's reaction. Oh, is Mr. Natsume's reaction when he heard Shum suggest it. There's more to the deduction than it seems. We must closely examine the scene of the crime again for some more clues. Um, 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 um. Oh, I can go to the other side. Oh, here's the other cup. Bro, the other cup is literally in his hand. It, it's another Western vessel for inf It's a teacup! And it too is empty. Given that he's actually holding this one in his hand. I can assume it was from this cup from which Mr. Shamsfield was actually drinking. But if that's the case, it changes everything. Everything we deduced up to now is turned on its head. I have a bad feeling about this. I almost don't want to say it. Yes, I know exactly how you feel. Twas a murder. Take that! 
The man die and dying alone? This other teacup is just the answer. Yes! There are two teacups in the room all along. Uh, oh, Sosuke san! In other words, this is a strong indication that at the victim's last supper, there was a guest present. <laughs> at the very least, we can say now with certainty that somebody else was here in this room last night, taking tea with the victim. <laughs> what are you talking about? Utterly, unbelievably, unjustly, unreasonable! To draw a conclusion on such meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. In which case, what more can we deduce about this possible guest at the table? Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. Sosaki san. Do you mean to say you know who exactly was in this room at the time of the victim's death? Indeed! What reveals the answer, of course, is a broken lock. I'm not sure if I like where this deduction is going now. I'm afraid it's too late to go back on the high con days of eating too much soup. <laughs> but the identity of the guest who was here last night when the victim passed away is... It's something I have a very bad feeling about. God, you and me both, Rinosuke. Oh, Sosaki-san. Yeah, God. No, I, I, I hate to say it, but he's he truly is sus. Sosaki. Well, you can try to ignore your feelings, but we cannot ignore the truth, Mr. Naruhodo. No, I suppose not. Time to look around again. Okay. Empty bottle, pile of books. I want one of the books, like... Soseki sons At first glance, it seems the only things in this room are makeshift stage and costumes. I overlooked these three books initially. I wonder what they are. Let's see. Titles read. A picture of Monsieur Le Croc, Canterbury Yearnings, and a meal for Gabore. Gabore? Wait. I I'm sure I've heard those titles before. Ah, they are Mrs. Soseki's books. I've returned. I have no clue what happened. But judging by the chat, we've I've missed some crucial soap licking. Yes. Yes. Yes, you missed out the, the soap eating saga. <laughs> uh, but the foot, uh, fear not, there, there was no actual soap eating. It was all a misunderstanding. <sighs> it could just be an incredible coincidence, but. It's the exact same three books that Mr. Natsume purchased the other day. What? Yes, on the day of the unfortunate incident when Miss Green was stabbed. Technically, soap licking. <laughs> yeah. How many links does it take to get to the center of the soap? It's a good question. I wonder how much money I'd have to pay someone to figure that out. I wonder how much money someone would pay me to figure that out. I think I'd probably do it for 1k. So like his son had just been to a bookshop and bought them. That's right. Anyway, now that these three titles are here in the room of the victim... Yet, yeah, Mr. Natsume claims never to have been here before. Nah! What? What does this mean, you think? I, I really don't know what to make of it. How of familiar books. Okay, but there's nothing else. Take that! I hate this. It feels like I'm throwing a friend under the bus. But at the same time, if the friend did something wrong, I, I need to throw him under the bus. Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the pile of familiar books. Quite so! It's no mere coincidence that these three titles are here in this room. It is the link to the truth. Oh, Sosiki-san! Mr. Natsume, you purchased these books four days ago at the second-hand bookshop. Th that's just a coincidence! In that case, you'll be able to bring the same three titles from your own room, will you not? This very moment? <laughs> no! 
whatever, non-negotiable. If you can't bring out your own copies here, it proves that these three books are in fact yours. <laughs> oh my gosh. Having purchased the books four days ago and returned to your lodgings, you were arrested the very next day. I love how the silhouette of him is him doing his little dance. So you could conceivably have bought the books here on that evening, but you never mentioned that. In other words, you could only have brought these three books here to the victim's room. <sighs> Last night, having returned to your lodgings after the trial concluded, at the old Bailey. Oh no. Um, uh, <laughs> In short, there's only one possible conclusion. The victim died here in his room last night as a result of poisoning. And that same night, the victim had a visitor. And that visitor Oh, it's spotlight. <sighs> Was you, Mr. Soseki Natsume? Soseki travels and poses in both her look and real skills right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why walk when you can vogue home, right? <laughs> oh, Soseki-san. This concludes the final act of Herlock Sherm's great deduction. Move to the music. Okay, okay. <sighs> Elementary, I suppose. Mm. <laughs> not again, not again, not again. <laughs> not again. Well then, it's not so bad. It appear you're gonna have to come for me down to the yard. Again? But, 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 please! Hold your horses? Yeah. Door! Key! Locked! Empty! Entry! Exit! Entirely! Impossible! He's so flustered, he's even being stranger than normal. <sighs> Speaking in key words rather than sentences. What? Think that's an alibi? We just made a copy. What? We live in the same building after all. We have plenty of opportunity, I'm sure. <laughs> Misery me! Sorry, sir. Your chance to give your side of the story later. Back to speak from the cells, Mr. Massage. Uh, you, you, you horrible er, uh, shrooms! He's really found himself an odd rival now, hasn't he? Oh man, I feel so bad for him. No one he thinks Sherlock's his like arch nemesis. Cause he gets arrested twice, and both times is directly because of Sherlock. Come now, no dilly dallying. Outside! It's a catch win. Look up strip, it's not Horlock Squire! I I never imagined I'd be in this position again, but You have to help me! Please! Please! I'm innocent! All right, I understand. We'll come to your cell later and talk about it. And one more thing. Oh, yeah? My, my poor little kitty cat. Oh my God, hi! Please give him his breakfast for me. I will. I'll take good care of him. Oh no, has he been just alone these past four days? <gasps> Waggy. And so, his evil curse still apparently unbroken. Sosuke-san found himself once again the prime suspect in a case of murder. Sosuke really has a talent for being sus. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the way he holds himself, I think. <sighs> Thanks to the incriminating deduction of the great detective. My dear fellow, what a- the honor belongs to you! I don't want it, you can have it, I'm sorry. Well, 
<laughs> At least that means Inspector Gregson is no longer here. We can examine the crime scene in more detail now. Yes, that's right! Ah, and of course? What? Have you forgotten what Inspector mentioned before? It was landlord, Mr. Garadub, who discovered Mr. Shamsphere. Ah, Mr. John Garadub. Yeah. I suspect we can find him in the sitting room on top of the floor, as usual. Right. We must remember to go and talk to him later, then. Okay. We'll do a quick peruse around, and then we can go and say hi to Mr. Garadub and see Gwagahai. What's that? What is this? Look at these extravagant bright costumes. Ah, oh, okay. Somehow they look out of place in this room, with its grim, shady going-ons. This looks like a king's attire. A king? I have always dreamed of being a king. Ah, grand aspirations. <laughs> I think you must suit to the feudal lord. A damn you or such like. With a crom <laughs> chromagate <laughs> top knot? Every Japanese <laughs> Japanese man wishes he had a uh Tron is it Kron Marge? Is that the one that is like fucking like uh shaved and then like up real high? I need to Google this afterwards. I need I need to see <laughs> I need to see what he would look like in one of those. Oh and you look wonderful with one! And you already have the sword! Kazuma can you imagine what would happen if I walked around the street with a komage and a sword? <laughs> oh god. So I guess that little thing on the ground is nothing. Okay. Uh, we have the windows. Should we look at the body? Should we save that for last? I really want to see- This just truly reminds me of uh, Shrek, Shrek the second. The Shrek, second Shrek movie. This is some sort of makeup snake snake shit there. Ba ba Some sort of makeshift stage, I think, isn't it? Where does the audience sit, though, for the nightly Shakespeare performances or well, the Shakespeare performances? Actors aspiring with a great stage must practice their art, Mr. Naruhodo, with or without an audience. In fact, on a related note, perhaps you should set up a mock bench for the defense in your office. What? And then you can practice your art every single day. Yeah, just do mock trial against yourself. I'll think about it. If you promise to don a beard and play the role of the judge. Well, if... If it would help you achieve your goal. <laughs> this I have to see. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll, we'll stop dilly dollying. We'll, we'll actually look at the body. Oh, poor guy. Oh, the poor man. So young to die. Do you suppose it was a very painful death, being poisoned as he was? I, I don't know. All we can do now is hope he'll be reborn into a better life. Yes, I suppose you're right. I wonder... Do you think that putting our hands together in a Japanese prayer will help a British soul? Sorry? I made sure I had reference at the ready, but just such an occasion as this, actually. What? Just this put Do you- You're okay? In preparation for coming across a- A dead body? Of a- Of a foreigner? Just, just in case? This book's entitled The Beginner's Guide to Praying for the Departed The British Way Okay I'll just reread it now One moment the there's quite a spider in that book, isn't there? <laughs> well, I suppose there would be quite a spider, because like praying the British way. And what? Didn't they have a message? A math? Uh, a math? Mathage? Massive? Massive? Uh, like argument between like Protestants and Catholics and all that jazz. I'm still wondering how many books this is allowed to read every day. Right? She carries so many books in her in her sleeves. I'm like, she must have buff as fuck arms, my dude. <laughs> Okay. okay, well, look at the... Look, I still think it's carbon monoxide poisoning, honestly. Like, I'm certain <laughs> that someone has to die because of that. And here we have another disproportionately large machine. Looks like some sort of meter or some kind? Ah, 
This is a gas meter, I think. Seems that in this district, residents pay for gas as they use with coins. Ah, I see. Uh, yeah, now that you pointed it out, I can see that there's a slot that looks like it would take a coin. So, if you put a coin in here... That's right! It would buy you about two hours of gas for lights and heating. So, if you were a poor person with no money, you'd have to sleep in the freezing cold? Yes, or if you were a scatterbrain with no change because you forgot to exchange your money at the bank... Oh, thank goodness there's no meter in our office. Sasato's arms need to be buffed for her Sasato taste dance. Oh, that's true! And Kimono's just hiding her massive arms in my You know what? You're absolutely right. I completely forgot she was like a judo master. <laughs> Ripped as fuck. But she just she just she just has that, that look of a dainty young lady because her sleeves are wide, so you can't see her rippling muscles. As you see from the outside, the window is completely bricked up. A, vis a message of the former window tax that the Britons had to pay. What strange things they used to tax in Great Britain. I mean, making people pay for the number of windows they had in the property. It's extraordinary. It's heartbreaking to think that the poor are having to block out the windows just to avoid an unfo unaffordable tax. Oh! Well, what is it, Mrs. Otto? If you look closely, a number of bricks are loose! What? Oh, a peephole! What a soap! Huh? Oh, yes, it looks like an amateur has broken out a few of them here. Was it Mr. Shamspire who did it, I wonder? Being a, the lodger renting the room. Oh, look at this, Miss Naruhodo! On the outside, there's a little lunch. And there's something on it. What, what outside? <laughs> Brr, it's so cold outside! You can feel it through this gap. It did snow all last night. So it would be cold. But more importantly, is that so? What's this on the ledge out here? What are those snow-covered lumps? It, it's more parts of soap. This soap. What the fuck? So I'm supposed to freeze his soap so they're like popsicles. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, you know, back before fridges, you have cool, you know, either cold boxes or you just keep things outside in the, in the snow. And what what's nicer than an icy treat in the morning, right? <laughs> yeah, so it, it is soap. It's not cheese, it's soap. Uh, I have no idea. But the pair of them look rather charming like that. Still, it's very strange, isn't it? Bars of soap lined outside the window? I think perhaps you should take one. There are two, after all. Oh, uh, dear, I, I suppose we could... Oh, what's this? Look here, in this soap. Ah, something carved into it? Oh, do you see in the middle here? Is that a penny? It's a patch that's a different color. It's a sort of transparent, but... Some sort of fancy design, I suppose? <laughs> Only in Great Britain! It looks like the Hinomoto flag of Japan, doesn't it? How <laughs> wonderful! It's probably a very expensive brand. Expensive? Then what's it doing in this brown shack or room? Bar of soap. One of two. Cheap bar of soap. Because you, you can do soap carvings and stuff. You can also hide things in bars of soap. That's how they used to sneak like razors into prisons. This part is a different color. It's an exquisite design, isn't it? Trust the British to turn boring bar of soap into something special. I quite like it. It reminds me of the Hinamaru design and the Japanese flag. I expect this is a rather expensive soap. That doesn't seem likely, given who it belongs. That doesn't seem likely, given to who it belongs to. Wait, I can't. I can't rip it out. I, you can clearly see that there's some kind of like indent here. Why can't I rip this out? <sighs> okay, that's fine. Oh, we still have the stuff from the other day. Huh. I guess this stuff might come in handy. Don't be a coward, just look it to find a word. <laughs> I want to, but the game won't let me. <laughs> oh, there's hats. Hats? 
What's this? There's nothing much in the shelves, huh? Sits there. Just wine glass and a bottle. Who thinks about cracks? Yeah, it's not much use, are they? Uh, what's the matter? Oh, I was just reminded of the Reaper, that's all. Ah, Prosecutor Lord Van Zykes. Yes, he's so reckless with his wine glasses. I was thinking it's a waste and that he should donate some of them to the needy. He absolutely should. Fucking smashing like six to seven glasses per trial. Fuck that guy. You can suggest it next time we meet. Uh, I think I fucking will. Wait, so I can't click this. I just missed earlier, my bad. What is this? Looks like an envelope? Yeah, looks like a part of an envelope, I think. Yes, I think you might be right. Perhaps it was torn off when a letter was opened. Is that significant? Well, it's a little out of place, perhaps. When you look around the room, there's no sign of a letter. All the rest of the envelope, in fact, is there. Oh, uh -huh, she's right. And yet, here we have the torn off end of the envelope. It just strikes me as unusual. I agree. We better take this just in the case. Yep, we'll just keep some rubbish we found on the ground, I guess. Um... This looks like a board that can be, like, jarred up, but I guess we can't. Um, is there anything else in here that we haven't yet checked? This? Gas wall light, isn't it? Must be connected to the gas pipe in the wall. Gas lights! A gas stove! London really is a city of gas! But now that I think about it, Mr. and Mr. Garadev had an open fire on the top floor, didn't they? Oh yes! You're right! I don't recall seeing a gas stove up there. Well, I much prefer a real fire anyway. It's much cozier. It is. They also probably have a chimney up there. But they have a chimney down here. Okay, I don't I don't see anything else. I guess we'll move and go and say hi to Mr. Garadev? Uh... Oh, we can't actually go to uh, Soseki-san's room yet. I want to feed... I want to feed the cat. Oh, wow! This place is much... Well, not... M like, tidier? But much, like, neater than before. Really straightened up. Here we are again! The eccentric landlord's eccentric top floor abode. We're here because Mr. Garadev's the one who discovered the incident this morning, don't forget. Hello there, sir. Ah, you chaps, eh? Yes, good morning, sir. Thank you for your cooperation in court yesterday. It was quite a trial. As much for Mr. Garadev as anyone, really. I'm straight back here off all that business at the bail yesterday. Didn't expect to wake up. It's more bally nonsense this morning. I wonder if you wouldn't mind telling us exactly what happened, Mr. Garadeb. Ugh, suppose you'd like to know all about that dead loss of an actor chap on the ground floor in room. Those were exactly Inspector Gregson's words, weren't they? Sorry to make you stand up, sir. You can you can sit down. Okay, we'll have a talk. Quick talk, quick chat, a quick chin wag. Must have been a real shock for you this morning. I hear you discovered uh that you discovered what happened. Ah, well, that hopeless actor chap rises at five o'clock sharp every morning without fail. Five thirty this morning, still handed the gas. So went down, knocked on his door. No bally answer. And that's when you broke into his room by kicking it down? Kicking down the door? Oh, got on the rum looking Japanese chap to do the work work, of course. Wasn't it a little premature to kick the door down? The man could just overstep by half an hour. That's very true, Mr. Naruhoto. If 30 minutes of the sleeping weren't such a behavior, I'd have to kick your door down every morning! Well, um, you know, why are you sweating? Better safe and sorry than all that. It's just me or is he avoiding our gaze all of a sudden? What the fuck is happening in this case? 
except that it was a sorry situation indeed that he found on the far side of the door. What the hell? Did you guys... You guys couldn't have possibly, like... Like... Together... Come together and plotted to kill him, right? No way, that's... No. The victim's name is Mr. Shamspear, I believe. Is that right? Yes, William Shamspear. Took the ground floor room three months ago now. And how would you describe him? In a word, destitute. Destitute? Ah, oh, let's face it. Only redeeming feature of that room is the cheap rent. Anyone wanting to live in a place like that is either broke or has a bally screw loose. So hard to choose which category Sosuke Sakis. Don't be mean to him, oh my god. So hard to choose which category Sosuke Sad would fall into. Mr. Narahodo, that's a little rude. Wait, I didn't say that. Mind reader. Wait, 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 guys. Guys, I prepare for this situation. For mind readers. Wait, I just need to find it. Give me a second. Now she can't read my mind. <laughs> Research? Into what? <laughs> Mystery? Plays? Oh, Shakespeare. Shakespeare, of course! Shakespeare! I have a tinfoil hat. <laughs> it's for my conspiracy theories. <laughs> and to stop Susato from reading my mind. <laughs> Read a few plays of the old bar myself, you know! Romeo and Hamlet and all that. Looks like I have a Hershey's kiss on my head. Oh, it kind of does look like a Hershey's kiss, doesn't it? Oh, what can you do? <laughs> I need protection. I got, I got theories. The government's listening. I have to avoid it. Oh, Romeo and Hamlet. Yes! William Shakespeare is England's most highly regarded classical playwright and author. He's also known as Saul in Japanese, as you know. And many of his works have already been translated. It seems incredible that Shakespeare was shortened to Saul, though. Someone was a little too heavy-handed there. There were a lot of costumes in the victim's room, actually, weren't there? Of course, Mr. Natsume is a scholar of English literature as well. I imagine he and Shakespeare would have had much in common. Oh no, were they friends? Shakespeare? Interpretation. Disagreement. Leads to shocking murder. Let's hope it's not that. <laughs> It's not a horror. Really? How rude! She read my mind again! The hat doesn't work! <laughs> the hat doesn't work! How does she keep reading my mind? Okay, let's talk about yesterday's events. After Mr. Natsume's trial yesterday, you came straight back here, I believe? Didn't you? The chocolate's not big enough. You're right, you're right. Maybe if I made it bigger. <laughs> there we go. It's like a baked potato now. <laughs> it's a big ass baked potato. Yes, this this will protect me. <laughs> to protect me from Sasato's mind reading. Well now, it's been about six in the evening by the time I got home. Snow was coming down rather heavily, as I remember. It was completely dark already. I felt like the trap was out at the time. Mr. Garadep noticed there was no light from his room or something, I suppose. Huh. But he was freshly dead this morning, because it was still warm, right? What in the world? Oh, you know. <laughs> Protection from conspiracy. <laughs> oh, man. Couldn't summon the energy for anything much, so I just sat in front of the fire up here. It was after eight before Shamspeel got back. Oh, so he was still alive then. Now it looks like the food coming thing. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, <laughs> It's a bit like a sh chef's hat if you squint at it. <laughs> it's just... Maybe it's a bit too big. I don't know, Sasato keeps reading my mind. I don't feel- I don't feel safe. <laughs> I don't feel safe. <sighs> Past one in the morning. Suppose he met his end sometime after that. I was asleep by then, so I'm rather in the dark there. Hmm. Well, thank you. That was very illuminating. So he did die this morning. 
Is everything all right, Mrs. Otto? Well, I was just thinking it's a little strange, that's all. Mr. Garrida, you were up here in your room all evening, if I understood correctly. Not a big fan of stairs? No, this blasted leg. Then... How is it that you seem to know? The precise movements of a tenant on the ground floor, I mean. Ooh. That's a very good point. I can't imagine that you hear noises from the ground floor all the way up here. Does this old man like to spy on his tenants? Is that it? Cause, wait, mm, this isn't the last game, but if I remember correctly, he, he and Joan did have like, a really in-depth understanding of how, how their tenants like moved around. So do they, do they spy on them? <laughs> do, do you, do you spy on your tenants? I say, I know what you're thinking, and it's belly outrage. I make it military, you know? I don't go around spying on my tenants. Why would I? Then how did you know, Mr. Garrida? It's the gas, woman. The gas tells me everything. Oh, do you like keep track of it? The, the, the gas? Alright, speaking, speaking gas? What on earth do you mean, sir? How can the gas tell you everything, let alone, know, let alone know anything? As you're probably aware, gas is supplied in the building by pipes! Y yes I more or less worked that out. Every room in the building is connected by a single pipe to the main gas main outside. And the gas company supplies gas to the properties via the main. Y yeah, yeah, I understand that too. Let me see if I can explain. Let's see how to light the gas lamps up here. What do you suppose will happen? They will turn on? Oh, uh, well, obviously, the room will get right off. Exactly! But at the same time, lights in all the other rooms of the house would dim for a moment. Oh, because it's all connected? What? They dim? Why? Perhaps it's because when you light a gas lamp, it briefly uses more gas than usual. And that reduces the amount of gas in the pipe for the other lamps that are connected to it. That might explain why the other lamps dim momentarily, mightn't it? Yeah, of course, because everything's connected to a single supply pipe. Yeah. Is that supposed to happen, though? It sounds rather undesirable. Drawing good point. Fact is, the gas company pipes in these parts are pretty hopeless. Long worn out. You barely got any gas in them to start with. Oh, this is also true, of course. Distinguish the lamps up here and they grow brighter than the rest of the house. Oh, right, I see. So by watching the flickering of the lamps in one room, you can determine what's happening elsewhere. Ah. You got it? Of course, when people come back home in the evening, before they go to sleep at night, what, what they're guaranteed to do is either put out, either light or put on the lamps and fires. Clever. Point of fact. Room on the ground floor and the one above it use slightly different amounts of gas. Oh, so you can even pinpoint who exactly is using the gas. Well, that's cool. Watching the lights in here closely, work out almost exactly what's going on in the whole house. Gosh! That's fascinating, Mr. Garadev. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, well, nothing to it, really. You know, before the internet, people really were bored, huh? <laughs> And I can't really see what's going to help us the case either. What I'd like to know is why Mr. Garadip is so interested in what his tenants are up to in the first place. I feel like there's more to it than idle curiosity. Hmm. I guess he's not going to tell us anything else. And there's nothing here in the room that... Oh, uh, well, you know, they cleared out most of the room, not all of it. Can't believe the snacks are still all over the place. But, you know, it's, this part's nice now, at least. Okay, I think... I think we should probably... Uh... Go to prison? Uh, it seems they must be still questioning poor Miss Natsume. Hmm. Okay. Should we go to Briar Road, then? Check out Briar Road. 
Oh, go to the outside. You can see the, the green stuff, the, the soap. From the outside. The exception of the top floor where Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb live, all the windows are bricked up. Yes, that's because of an old window tax that was charged on a number of windows a property had. In order to pay less tax, the poor members of society filled many of their windows. The tax has since been abolished, hasn't it? So windows can be opened up again, surely. Yeah, but you see, glass is a poor insulator, so it gets like much colder and stuff. So I guess if you're like in a country that has winters like England, keeping them bricked up might be good. Although at the same time, carbon monoxide. Death dead. Unfortunately, it would appear the residents of the district can't afford to pay the half the work done. Yes, that is a sad state of affairs. Especially for people like poor Mr. Natsume, who have to live up in a cooped up windowless room. So it's the price you pay for living in a very cheap accommodation. It all seems rather pointless when you put it like that. Wait, so I can't specifically do anything about the green stuff? The green stuff? Hmm. Okay, that's strange. None of the other windows have it. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess nothing else in the street looks like it's particularly damning. This is all stuff we've seen before. Broken bike, saggy old house, bad foundations, the street, uh... Cute little snowman. Hmm. I guess we'll... Should we go to the... Are they still questioning him? I think you haven't examined everything in Shamspear's room yet. Oh, did I miss something? Shit, I have to go back then. Yeah, cause... cause I thought they would they would let me um check out the green stuff, but apparently not. Okay, let's see. Let's go to the classic top to bottom method. What am I missing? What am I missing? Uh I've looked at the body, right? Yeah, I've looked at the body. I've looked at the cup. Oh no, I haven't looked at the cups. Ah, uh, one of the tea cups that Mr. Shamsby and his guests drank from last night. But don't go drinking from them, Mr. Nadahoro. There's a bit of poison inside. I I'm not planning on drinking any. Don't worry. Anyway, uh, the cups are both empty. That's true. So, one was Mr. Shamsby's, and the other must be the cup that Mr. Natsume was drinking from. The Soseki someone wasn't poisoned, of course. Perhaps we should take these. Oh, we can just straight up take. <laughs> I love how the amount of evidence you can just take from a crime scene. <laughs> we can take these so we can examine them in more detail later. Okay. Uh, Tika's used by Mr. Shanspear and Natsume. The one the lime green is Natsume's. Okay. Oh! Looks like you're having a good snoop around, eh? Sorry, Gregson. It's Inspector Gregson! <laughs> back, back so soon? Well, I threw that little Japanese fella in the clink. Went and reported this to the investigation division. In five minutes time, this place will be cornered off by the yard. Oh, I see. Well, I better get leaving then. <laughs> Poor Miss Natsume must be feeling very low being back in the cell again so soon. I'm sure. We should probably- We should probably go and- Um, sir? Uh... I don't- I'm scared. I don't want to keep going. Oh, this hat is not protecting me as nearly as much as I thought it would. You were waiting for this? You were right, he was taking a nap. I did- I did doubt you. He was just cosplaying Julia all along. God. And we, being Romeo, thought he was actually dead. 
Uh, what's wrong, Mr. Naruhodo? <laughs> out, out! Brief candle! Life's but a walking shadow! A poor player! As struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. Now, how sound of the next part? This tale told by an idiot, for the sound and furry, signifying nothing. Indeed! Oh, happy day! Shamsu's such a great character. He's great. He's such a great actor. We all thought he was dead. Oh my god! What the fuck? What the, you know what? I, I'm I'm kind of glad he's he's not he's not dead because I, I did want to see more of him. And this is my chance. I, what is, okay, I guess. Uh. It turns out people can recover from death. Who knew? Yeah, earlier when I said I hope he gets better soon, I was joking, but oh my god, he actually got better. What the fuck? Walking Dead! Oh my god, what the fuck? Is he alright? Is he okay? The fellas are dead. Wait, you, you, you quoted Shakespeare? Like, no, no problem? I thought. Rexon, I thought it was because you were okay with the fact that he wasn't dead, but you're equally surprised? What the fuck is happening? What the fuck is going on? The, the fella isn't dead at all? What was that nonsense he was saying, though? I think... Yes, it was from William Shakespeare's Macbeth. It's a look from Act 5, Scene 5. Shakespeare? So it was that the victim, Mr. William Shamspear, came back to life. If the man had indeed been poisoned, it transpired that it hadn't killed him. He was taken by emergency carriage to the nearby hospital for treatment, and Inspector Rexon evicted us from the scene of the crime. Whatever that now was. I mean, it's not a murder anymore, so is it even a crime? Is it even a crime? Hey? Who are you? Wait, are you the guy who was fighting with him the other day? What do you think happened now? G good question. What a strange situation with Mr. Natsume. Uh, arrested for murder, but then the victim comes back to life. Still a crime because of the poison. I mean, we, we haven't proved yet that there's a poison though, right? <laughs> uh, like, I guess he probably didn't put- I mean, I don't know, like, like Pokey Dumping said, this could just be a really fateful Romeo and Juliet reenactment. <laughs> oh god. This- this road is fucking cursed for all those weird ass crimes. I think perhaps the victim was never dead in the first place. It seems very likely that Mr. Shamsia did consume poison, as we deduced, but it was an accident, attempted suicide, or attempted murder. Until the truth can be established, I imagine the police will keep Mr. Natsume in custody. I suppose so. Let's hope it doesn't come to anything more than a night in the cells. Oh, poor sosaki san Oh, what's this? Yeah, the guy. What's the man doing over there? Looks like he's trying to see into Soseki-san's lodgings. I mean, no, that's not Soseki-san's lodgings. That's, uh... Shamspear's lodgings. 
Is something wrong, Miss Naruhodo? Um, excuse me? Can we have a word? Nah. It looks like a bee. Eh? Where'd it go? He just ran off. I'm so sure I've seen that man somewhere before. Where was it? He was arguing with Sham Spear in, in, in the street. Mm. I do too, but I don't remember. Oh, come on. It's been longer for me than you guys. How come I remember this? Well, we've done as much investigating here as we can, I think. Perhaps we ought to go to prison and speak with Mr. Natsume again. Good idea. Yeah, we can tell him the good news. Uh, Sham Spear's not actually dead. He's, he's, uh, he's just fine. Uh, not just fine, but like... He's alive. Oh, so sick I'm so sorry. I'll take my hat off before I put you in a in a fit as well. There we go. Everything everything's normal, Sosaki san. Don't don't worry about it. Mr. Natsume, have the police finished questioning you now? <laughs> Look up student Mr. Naruhoro Esquire! Oh yes? <laughs> what is he? Tell me! Is he a ghost? Is he here to haunt me? Let me guess, you're talking about Mr. Holmes? He actually calls himself a great detective, Mr. Natsume. He's not a ghost. The, his dialogical deductions? They're not of this world! They've... they've... they've left me! <laughs> cursed! I'm cursed, I tell you! Well, that sort of... hurts. Credit where credit is due, Miss Naruhoro. You were heavily involved in the deduction, too. Yes, uh, moving on. We have some wonderful news. Uh, your victim, in quotes, died but got better. He's fine now. Uh, probably fine now. The victim that we all thought was dead has come back to life again. Actually, now that we say it like that, that might he might freak out. Now, in the absolutely worst case, he can only be tried for attempted murder. Great, isn't it, Mr. Natsume? It's <laughs> terrible! Oh? I'm stuck in this cell, suffering for some silly wrong end of a stick! Yeah, okay. You did it, didn't you? Confess, you're the killer! Why the mustache? Tons <laughs> of questions! Sorry to hear that. Ugh, selfish shyster! Make up your mind! Are you dead or alive? If you were gonna come back to life, why bother dying? Uh, for the theater, I assume. Wickedly, wishy, washy, William! Uh, well, it actually seems likely that Mr. Shamsphere was never actually dead in the first place. Ah, uh, yes. That might make sense. Uh, I'm pleased that he's alive, of course. That might make sense. What do you know? Our lively debate last night was much fun. I'd be sad to think it was our last. Oh! Oops. <laughs> so thank you, son. Um, this is not a myth. Does that mean that you did see the victim last night? You w met with Mrs. Shamspear, didn't you? Yeah, I'm not saying another word. I demand to have a lawyer present. Um, yeah, you you have a lawyer present. I'm 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 your lawyer present. You know, I'm finally having that um uh attorney client meeting before a court case. Can you believe it? I've been looking forward to this. Please, Soseki san, tell me everything. <laughs> Who do you think I am? Please, Mr. Natsune, we need to hear your side of the story. <laughs> Why am I cross like this? I'll bring you some snacks. Let's have a conversation. What happened? Can you tell us exactly what happened last night then, Mr. Natsume? There's nothing to tell! But, Mr. Naruhara Esquire, I am eternally grateful to you for helping me with the accused... accursed case yesterday! 
that kiss that saw poor Miss Green hospitalized after she ended up with a knife in her back. It's hard to believe it was only yesterday. After the trial was over, I trudged my weary way back to my lowly lodgings. And that evening, at past nine it must have been, I was visited by Mr. Shamspear. So you did go into the victim's room then? So he feared... I didn't do anything wrong! I'd never been to his room before! It was his first time! Then what made you decide to go? I bumped into him when I arrived back at the house. We, we got chatting and it developed into a discussion. But he had to go out, so I bade him farewell. That ties in with Mr. Garadip said. That the victim went out and came back after eight. Met again later that evening, around nine or just after. Uh, when I took him some nice tea I brewed as a gift. Ah, that's nice. Oh wait, shit, the tea. So it was you who brought the tea that had clearly been drunk at the scene then. And I suppose you were discussing the works of Shakespeare, weren't you? Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Romeo and Juliet! Who was the stronger? Like in a fight? <laughs> like in a fight? Um, Romeo and Juliet, who was stronger? I'd personally say Romeo because he was a whole ass adult man and Juliet was like a teenager. So that's probably the case. You know, the more you read Romeo and Juliet, like the, the creepier it, it is. Like, Romeo and Juliet is just straight up creepy. I don't know why it cemented itself as, like, the 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 star romantic literature of our time. When it's, like, dead-ass creepy. Romeo, it was, like, a weird, a weird uh, playboy who decided that his muse of the week was Juliet, an actual in-real-life teenage girl, and it ended badly. Like, three other people died uh, who didn't need to die, and uh, they themselves also, also fucking perished. So, you know, uh, that sucked. Sasaki tried to make friends, and it resulted in an arrest. <laughs> Time to avoid humans forever. Oh no, you're right! Ugh, he came back from his case all weary, and then he had the first socialization. He's like, had in like, I don't know, I, I can only assume a long ass time. And it, it immediately backfires. Ugh, poor guy. And he was having a good time debating with someone that had interest, the same interests as him too. Aww. I'm sure. Such a stimulating subject, Shakespeare! And the debate became very heated, so you slipped poison into Mr. Shamspear's tea? No, never! Not at all! Team Juliet won! That was me! <laughs> oh, I was, I was mistaken. Apparently, Juliet is a stronger. Hmm. I want grounds. <laughs> I want grounds. I want to. I want to hear your arguments. <laughs> and when I left his room, that flamboyant fellow was fighting fit. I swear it, categorically. Ah, so what's with the cursed existence then? Mr. Natsumit, you often say the same thing about yourself. I've noticed that you have a cursed existence. I'm sure I've mentioned this to you before, but I've been here in Great Britain for a year now. And in that time, I have learned it's no place for me. It can be very trying to live in a foreign land and adapt to the ways of another culture. There are foreigners everywhere I look. They all stare at me. They all laugh. That's the impression I get whenever I go out. It makes me scared to leave my room. Aww. Which is why I become a recluse. But even in my room, I find no respite from my fears. I move more times than I can remember. Then, one week ago, I moved onto Briar Road. But why, I mean? Why, why did you choose that place? It doesn't seem... very comfortable. Because the rent is cheap. I have so little money, it, it spoke to me. That's relatable. The rent? Obviously, there's a reason why it's cheap. Because the room is cursed. Cursed? Cursed how? 
The previous occupant, the man who lived there before I took the room, died there. Oh no! There was only a young man, but one morning he was found dead, and no one could explain why. Carbon monoxide poisoning! Surely no one would want to live in a room with a history like that. I didn't. When the letting agent recommended the place, I wavered. But I want books, and books cost money. A horrible history is a small price to pay. Hmm. Yeah, that's relatable. Also, I feel like most people uh, choose to overlook this, but if you live in an old house, it's more than likely that someone died there. I mean, especially if it's like a an old like English house or something, like somewhere with like a like a like with a house like several hundred years old or something. Like people used to just live and die, and they used to be born in their houses, die in their houses. Several generations of people all living in the same house, and you know, so like death is ine inevitable, right? Of course, uh, that being said, death under suspicious circumstances, like this young guy who d seemed to die for no reason, uh, that definitely is a, a mark against a reason why to rent a place. But generally speaking, uh, yeah, pe people die everywhere all the time. <laughs> uh, unfortunate byproduct of being alive, it seems. I realized it would mean I could buy more books! I signed the lease like lightning! Brave or blinkered? But after I moved in, as soon as I came to realize what I'd done, <laughs> I realized how horrible the room history really was. Gosh, was it really so awful? Did you, did you have any poltergeist type type experience or? Because it was just lamp flickering. We have an explanation. How did our room's horrible history affect you, Miss Natsume? What happened? At first, it was just a feeling. The feeling of beady eyes boring into my back, watching me. Do you think that might have just been your mind playing tricks on you? Or maybe your cat? No, 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 no. My mind doesn't know any tricks. It was somebody else. It's been... What lo long nightmare ever since I was g given the keys to the place. A nightmare? You've been having bad dreams, you mean? All the souls who've died in the room <laughs> lean over me in my sleep and try to strangle me. That really is horrible. And now I've come to think of it, it happened again last night too. The very same night that Mr. Shamspeer was writhing in agony from the poison in his body. I was on the verge of being suffocated silently by those miserable spirits in my room. You simply must move out of that room as soon as possible. Or, you know, like, uh, do the same thing Shamspeer did and, like, open up a hole to get some airflow. <laughs> yes, you're right. I know it. And that's why I've already searching for the next room with a history with that, with a history to call home. I think you should perhaps try to avoid accommodation with any kind of history at all. Otherwise, I'm scared that you yourself may become history. Oof, Susato-san knows how to make the man listen. <sighs> Soseki-san. Of course. Mr. Lord of the Manor is worried about the curse of my room as well. Oh, you mean Mr. Gary Deb? Yes. He knows that if people keep dying there, he'll never be able to rent it out again. Well, that's... that's true. I, for one, wouldn't go near the place. Ah! Perhaps! That may explain why the landlord pays so much attention to the gas lamps and his tenants' movements. You mean because he's worried about their well-being? seem to have an unusually keen interest in the amount of gas in the pipes. There must be a reason why he keeps such close tabs on the occupants of his lit rooms. W what do you mean, he pays so much attention to the gas lamps? <coughs> oh dear! No, it's nothing to do with you, Miss Natsume. Please forget I said anything! Oh, now you're talking about me behind my back as well? Oh, no, 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 sweetheart, no, no. What's important is that Mr. Shamspear isn't, in fact, dead at all. 
Once it came around, he was able to tell us what happened. He'll be able to get you released, and it'll, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, I do hope you're right. <clears throat> Excuse me? Inspector Gregson. I'm gonna help over here in what you just said. On that note. Have some good news and some bad news. Uh, is the good news that the guy is awake and the bad news that he can't remember? I'm hoping that's the good and bad news. Because the other good and bad news could be good news. You don't have to worry about uh, the guy being in a coma. Because the bad news is that he's dead. Oh! <laughs> what you want first? Uh, bad news please. Always, every time, the bad news comes first! When hope is all you have, hold on to it. That's my guiding principle. Wise words. Right, well, in that case, the good news it is. Eh? Sorry, it's just a little easy to explain everything that way. Then why'd you ask? <sighs> then why'd you ask my preference? Exactly! God. As you might have heard, the victim, Mr. Shamsphere, is just unconscious. He's gone round now. Yes, we saw it happen in all its terrifying glory. Still being treated by doctors, we managed to get a written statement from him already. Oh, that's wonderful! Oh, isn't that wonderful, Mr. Natsume? Oh, thank goodness! It's all over then! I can leave this somber cell! Oh, the bad news. Sorry, no. It's not on the cards. What? Why ever not, Inspector? Mr. Shamsphere has implicated someone as being responsible for what happened last night. Implicated someone? Oh dear. You... you don't mean... I'm sorry to say I do. Yes. I point out the finger at you, Mr. Natsume. <laughs> my sweet poison did he seeketh to end my life. That wicked cat kateth. Sosaki Natsume. No! So I'm afraid you'll be appearing in court as planned. Son of a bitch. We wanted to make that necessary preparations. <laughs> no! Oh, Sosaki san. And so, once again, Sosaki san found himself having to take the dock in the old bailey. Whether his room is haunted, or whether he was just terribly unlucky, I knew I had no choice. The following day, I'll represent him in court, and do my utmost to break the curse that blighted him. God. What a series of unfortunate events, right? Ah, uh, and we're going to be continued. <sighs> well, um... I... G I guess it's good that he's not dead? Bro, when he actually rose up like a fucking marionette on strings, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I didn't know what to think. Oh. Yeah, Sosuke son's fucking very bad, no good at all, very horrible week. <laughs> it's it's been a week for him. It's like literally back to back cases where he just came home yesterday after being granted his freedom and is immediately implicated by by a fucking another person as as a potential like attempted murderer I guess him rising from his seat was hilarious <laughs> I'm glad you saw it as hilarious because I was actually so scared I was like what the fuck is happening for a split second I actually was like oh my god is this place actually haunted <laughs> I forgot that ghosts are real in the Ace Attorney universe <laughs> ghosts are real <laughs> oh god oh. I uh. I guess, like, is it? I guess we'll just go straight back into into court <laughs> and figure it out. Like, what's with the the guy outside uh, his window? Because that's the same guy that was arguing with uh, Shamspear in the days previous, right? When we were investigating for the for the other case, we we saw him have a have a bit of a tiffle with someone else. I swear it was that guy. And what's with the soap? And why can't I break open the soap? I want to break open the soap. I want to see what's inside. The drugs? Drugs? 
Are, are, are you doing drugs? Oh, God. Who knows? <laughs> well, I, I guess we'll find out next time. <laughs> um, it, my timetable milling, hopefully I can get another stream in, in on Saturday. But if not, then fucking Monday again, I guess. Brooklyn Nine-Nine cocaine in the soap plotline. Do they have a soap and cocaine and soap plotline? Do they? I completely forgot about that. <laughs> but yeah, right. You can use soap to sneak stuff in, cause, cause you know it's kind of like baking a baking a file into into a cake to sneak things into prison. You can sneak soap stuff into soap into prison as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See prison. God, it's just it's malleable. You can stuff you can put stuff inside, and you won't be able to see it. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> Well, be it be it cocaine or 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 something else, I'm we're going to find out what's in that soap. We're going to come to the bottom of this, and we're going to figure out why the hell it wasn't allowed to be spoken of. I, I guess we'll find out next time. <laughs> Once again, thank you everyone for showing up and uh, coming along with this on this journey with me. I shall see you guys next time. I hope you have a wonderful evening. And a lovely weekend if I don't see you on the weekend. And so until next time, uh, bye bye! <laughs>
Thank you.